Hey everybody, Jake here with Career Solutions. Thanks for stopping by, I appreciate it. Today we're gonna to talk about dynamic distribution groups, uh, primarily creation of dynamic distribution groups for Office 365 through Windows PowerShell. Um, this is going to be a very specific tutorial, so if you would like to see more like it, uh, please be sure to like and share and subscribe to our channel and we will create additional videos. Um, so let's go ahead and get started then. Um, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna focus on conditional custom attributes and custom attributes. Uh, custom attributes are attributes that are created for a user. So if you go into your Exchange Admin Center for Office 365, go to More Options and go to Custom Attributes, you'll see that you have one through 15 here. Now you can put any values, um, but they're uh, single values, so a single string value. So we would do custom one, and then you could do another one. Let's say we want to do custom two. So what this does is this creates a value for one and two. And we created it through the GUI, not a big deal. This part can also be administered through PowerShell. However, we will not be covering that in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and save now that we've created those two custom attributes for our user. And let's go to groups. As you can see, we do not have a group currently through the GUI interface. But let's go ahead and create one using the GUI real quick. Let's go to dynamic distribution group and we'll say GUI made and we'll just say GUI made and we will add a rule. And let's say rule one is, let's make it custom one. Okay, and then let's also do rule two and let's do custom two. All right. Okay, we'll create that group, and there you go. GUI made, custom attribute one is custom one, custom attribute two is custom two. Now, you might be thinking that, great, that's perfect, that will work. Now, in this particular case, it will only work because custom one and custom two are both true. Now, if I were to go back to my user account, and go down to our custom attributes. If I were to remove one of these, that statement for groups would actually no longer be correct. Therefore, I would no longer show up in this uh, dynamic distribution group. So I'm going to show you a method to get around this and basically replace this and operator that's between these two custom attributes with an or operator allowing you to add members to a dynamic distribution group where they have custom one in the custom one attribute field or custom two in the custom attribute two field. And this will allow you to create a little bit more of uh, more dynamic scenarios in your uh, domain environment, um, as well as opens up many other opportunities um, that can potentially be unique to your domain. Now there is a there is a third method and we're not going to actually talk about it today. It's extension custom attributes and there's one through five and these cannot be administered through the Exchange Admin Center. They are only administered through PowerShell. So if you would like to learn about that, again, please comment, subscribe, uh, send me a message and let me know. Um, I would be more than happy to cover a tutorial on that. Um, it's super unique, customizable, it allows up to 1300 values being stored that can be looked at, um, and it's also comma delimited, so it's super powerful, but it, it's obviously not necessary for 80% of people that are interested in this feature primarily. So let's go ahead and move forward then. I'm gonna show you step by step how you would go about administering uh, dynamic distribution groups through PowerShell. Um, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're going to wanna make sure that your execution policy is set to remote signed, as well as uh, in PS remoting has been enabled. So we'll do enable PS remoting. 
and I should already have it enabled. So WinRM is already set up to receive requests on this computer. Now this will be completely dependent on your domain and how things are set up. Um, you may have to request access for this. You may not have the administrative privileges that will allow you to do this. So again, if this doesn't work for you, uh, you may need to speak to your system administrator um, or you may uh, need to be on a domain enabled PC or a domain joined PC. Um, I am not on a domain joined PC. Uh, so I am using uh, PS remoting and session creation to gain access to Microsoft Exchange. So now that we've done that, let's do our set execution policy. Do, 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 do. And we'll do remote signed. Um, hit yes. I'm not going to uh, go into details pertaining to this. If you'd like to know more, you can um, look up details pertaining to this. I can provide a link or you can simply use the link that is provided right here that will uh, give you a clear understanding of what that does. Um, okay, so now that we have all of those set up, now we are enabled system-wise to allow us to access the exchange. But first, let's go ahead and store our credentials. We're gonna create a variable called my credentials. All right, and we are going to use the get credential commandlet. And let's go ahead and put this in. Okay, so now that we've set up our credentials, now we need to store a session. Um, you can do this two ways. I like to store them in variables. So we're gonna go ahead and create a session variable and we are gonna do new PowerShell session. Okay, there are a few parameters that are required for this commandlet. So uh, let's go ahead and fill those out. So the first one is gonna be configuration name, configuration name, and this is gonna be Microsoft exchange okay um, our next one's going to be the connection URI so let's go ahead and do connection URI and we're gonna do HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash outlook dot office 365.com forward slash PowerShell dash live ID forward slash that's a lot I know I'm sorry <laughs> um, Okay, so we've got two more. So the next one is we need to pass our credentials that we created previously um, into this commandlet. So credentials, and then we stored it as my credentials. And then last but not least, we want to do um, our authentication type, which is going to be basic. Authentication is basic. And I actually forgot we are gonna do one more. We're gonna allow uh, redirection. So hit enter. Parameter cannot be found that matches credentials. Uh, yes, it would help if this was done correctly. Credential, not credentials. Okay, so this is going to uh, set up set up that connection. Now, at this point, you're not actually stored. You don't have a stored session. So what we need to do is we need to import that session and it'll open our session up and we can start doing things. So you're gonna import PS session and then pass in our session variable. Now you can see this, uh, stuff going on up here is it's fetching all of those commands um, and finding what is available. Now, for most of you that are probably going to be on a domain uh, environment, you're probably gonna be remoting into a uh, into a, a server of some kind, probably a virtual machine um, that will hopefully be updated. Um, you wanna make sure that your uh, PowerShell versions are at least matching uh, between the PowerShell version you're running on your PC and the PC or the server that you're remoting into. Um, if you get a bunch of error messages at this point, um, that's not a big deal. All that's going to do is tell you what commands are missing and what you won't be able to use. Uh, now you can do a test here just to make sure that you have access. In that case, we'll go ahead and do get mailbox identity and then just put in the name of a user. So there's me, ta-da, look, found, yay. Okay, so we know that the functionality is working, so let's go ahead and create our dynamic distribution group. So we're gonna use the commandlet new dynamic distribution group 
and it uses the uh, name parameter and we'll call this PowerShell made because we're awesome, right? Okay, yeah, we're pretty cool. Okay, so we're gonna pass it the, now t well, okay, let's step back a bit. Now, technically we could create it um, with only the name parameter and the recipient parameter. So we have to do include recipients. Um, include recipients. And in this case, this is just going to be mailbox users. So mailbox users. Awesome. Now, we could create this right now, but we don't want to do that just yet because we want to add in some conditional custom attribute parameters, kind of like what we made for the GUI made dynamic distribution group. So we're gonna do conditional custom attribute one, and we're gonna do custom one. And then we're also going to do conditional custom attribute two, and we're going to do custom two. Hit enter. If you see this, that means it's been a success. Now you could also test this and you could do get dynamic distribution group and then put in the name uh, PowerShell main and then you can see that you get that. And keep this in mind because we're gonna be using that to test um, what users have been added to a dynamic distribution group. So this is actually a pretty important command that you'll use and that'll be stored in a variable, but we are not there yet. So first off, what we need to do now is, I guess actually we could test that. So let's go ahead and store that equals get dynamic distribution group identity PowerShell main. Okay, so now we just stored that and you can test that by just calling that variable store. So now what we wanna do is we wanna get the recipients that are members of that dynamic distribution group. So we're gonna do get recipient and then we're gonna do recipient uh, preview filter, and then we're gonna pass that variable. So store dot recipient filter. And you will see that I am now a member of that dynamic distribution group. And the reason why is because our conditional custom attribute one is custom one and custom two. Now, if we go and look at my attributes, you will see that I have custom one and custom two. Now, what happens if we delete this? Let's, let's take a look at that. So custom one, delete, save. So now I only have custom one in the custom one attribute field. So if we restore that into our store variable and call it again, I don't show up. And the reason is, is because like I showed you earlier in this video, this, is an AND operator. So both of these conditions have to be true in order for the recipient to be added to this dynamic distribution group. But we don't like that. We want to be added if custom one is in the first attribute or if custom two is in the second attribute. So let's go ahead and modify this a little bit. So to do that, we're gonna do set dynamic distribution group and you're gonna call the identity, and we called it PowerShell made. And there are a few other parameters that we will want to um, set for this. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So we're gonna call the recipient filter parameter, and we're gonna use curly brackets. Don't forget that, it won't work without those. And then now, we're gonna specify our parameters within the recipient filter. So first off, you still have to do recipient type. So recipient type is equal to uh, mailbox. Well, actually we can do mail user in this case since it's within recipient fil filter. So recipient type equals mail user and actually don't forget to put parentheses around that, okay? And then we're gonna do an AND operator. And within this parenthesis set, this is going to be our conditional OR statements for the custom attributes. Now, previously they were set up as custom or conditional custom attributes. 
because that was within the rule. So now we're going to be specifying what we're looking for from the recipient. So we're going to do custom attribute one is equal to custom one or custom attribute two is equal to custom two. And that's it. And then hit enter. Now, if we come up here and we refresh this, you'll now see that we have a new dynamic distribution group that's been created. Go to membership. You'll no longer be able to administer this through the GUI interface of Exchange Admin Center. You'll have to do this through PowerShell at this point when you add in customizations like this. Okay, so let's just hit save or cancel either or we didn't make any changes. And let's go back to that store variable and let's call it again. And let's see what happens. Okay, so sorry, I had to step away for just a sec. Um, if you look, we actually got an error message and the first return for our store variable did not actually work as expected. And the reason for that is because we set our recipient type to mail user, which is actually incorrect. Um, the recipient type is going to be user mailbox. So now if we go back and do our store variable and do our get recipient of that store variable, you'll see that it now finds me. If we go back to mailboxes and look at my user account for those custom attributes, you'll see that I only have a value in the custom attribute one field. Now, if I were to come here and modify that to custom one, two, three, four and save it, if we ran the exact same commands, I would no longer show up. And then also, in addition to that, if we were to come back and we were to add custom two here and hit OK, then you would see that if we rerun this, I now show up again. And what this means now is that anytime someone sends an email to that distribution group, I will receive it. Um, that's pretty much all we're going to cover today for this. Um, I hope that helps you. If you would like to see more, go ahead and again, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel. We will be posting more tutorials that are similar to this, and we can do many more uh, PowerShell tutorials, Windows administration, um, and much, much more. So again, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate your time, and you have a good one.